in your <clears throat> bullets of this morning, each one of you had a little pamphlet, it was a week of prayer. Gwen's going to come this morning and start us off with uh, the one for today. Shores uh, for Sunday. Uh, James Barker, pastor of Holy Hill Baptist Church, looks on everything God does as a blessing. Among the blessings experienced by the church located on the outskirts of Panama City is an interest-free loan from the McGuire State Mission offering. The money purchased 1.5 acres of property along Highway 98 as a site for the congregation to build a church. A new church building will enable the primarily African-American congregation to create better visibility in the community and connect with residents of all races. Holy Hill is a community-sensitive body of believers, seeing needs, meeting needs, and sharing faith. If a church doesn't affect its community, it's not doing its job, said the pastor. Grateful for Florida Baptist's heart of generosity, the church reflects the spirit of giving as it ties its income through the cooperative program and gives generously to the Baptist Association as well. Thank you so much. I want to share with you just a few things about <clears throat> our state here, in which we're taking up this offering for. I don't know if you know all this tonight, perhaps you do, but in Florida, the population now in the state of Florida is 19 million. Uh, persons who do not claim Jesus as their Savior, 15 million. Now think about that for a moment. 19 million here, 15 million do not claim Christ as their Savior. Florida's rank in population among the states of the United States is number four. Uh, Florida Baptist churches proclaiming the gospel in many, proclaims the gospel in many languages, uh, 22 different ones. Florida Baptist churches that worship in languages other than English, 800. Think about that for a moment. Florida Baptist Congregations, 2,968. Baptism reported by Florida Baptist last year was 49,010. That's just some statistics about the state of Florida. And I want to just uh, speak to you this morning for a few moments about what we are to do on mission. So if you have your Bible, turn with me to uh, Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, and I know that you know these verses very well. Matthew 28, I want to start with verse 19, though, or verse 18, excuse me. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things wheresoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we come to you here this morning. We want to thank you and we want to praise you. You have been so wonderful and so good to us. You've blessed each one of us individually and you have blessed us as a church. So Heavenly Father, in the next few moments, 
help us to just get our eyes up off the things of this old earth and look full in your wonderful face. And when we do, the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Father, this morning I pray if there's one here who does not know you as a personal Savior, that today they would open up their hearts, invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come in, and he will and he will save their soul if they'll only believe. And for all of us who are Christians, help us, Lord God, to see and to understand that you are our Heavenly Father, and that we are to love you and serve you and do the very best that we can possibly do while we live here upon this earth. I pray, O oh God, that you will just lead, guide, and direct in everything we do and in everything we say. For we ask all of this in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for his sake, Amen. Amen. Now, uh, missions, I think, need to be rede redefined. A church does not simply give to mission. A church has a mission. This church has a mission. Yes. All churches have a mission. What is our mission? I just read it to you. It's called the Great Commission. <laughs> we're to go, we're to teach, we're to baptize all over this old world in which we live in. By the way, the book of Acts says that we're to start where we're at. We're to start right here. The believers in Acts were to start in Jerusalem and then Judea and Samaria and to the othermost parts of the earth. So we must start right here in Sun City Center, Hillsborough County, the state of Florida, the United States, and then to the rest of the world. That's a tall, tall order. Jesus said, though, that all power is given unto him in heaven and earth. And I would say to you this morning that we have that power also. If you're a child of God, we have the power to do what our Lord and our Savior has called us to do. You know, we need to make the number one thing the number one thing, though. And the number one thing for every child of God is winning the loss to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's true now. We all cannot go on the mission field. We cannot even go out and, uh, up to Tallahassee or some of those places and do witnessing and work. But I want to say to you this morning that we can give so that others can go. Our state mission offered reaches so many in our state, here at home, not only in the state of Florida, but Cuba, West Virginia, Nevada. We have started missions and churches to grow all around the world. So what we're to do is just simply be and do what we know that we're to do, and that is, to win the loss of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we can't go, then we can give so that others can go. You know, when someone is saved, you can say that we had a part in it. You know, uh, what was it? Uh, let me look again. 40,000? 40,000 <laughs> 40, and 10 people were saved in the state of Florida. Last year, I want to say to you, we had a part in that. Now, we might not have seen a lot of people saved here in our church because our church is a little bit different, but we had a part in seeing those people come to the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know how many of you know this, the property that we have here, the state, this very offer that we're talking about here, the state give us money to purchase the land here or to help purchase it. They didn't give it all but money to help us purchase it, you see. We're people of God, and we're on a mission. And I want to share with you three things this morning for the very reason that we do mission work. We're a mission-minded church. I think if a church ever loses, it's mission-minded. 
that will die on the stem. You have to be involved in mission and mission work. So three things. First of all, I believe the kind of world that we live in. Uh, it's a world in which people can be eternally lost. Some people don't understand what that means. They just think, you know, you're lost out here somewhere in the backwoods or someplace. But when you're lost and do not accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you are bound for a place that is called hell. That's right. And I'm saying to you this morning that there are no one, no one in the right mind would want to go to that awful place. So the reason that we are involved in missions and all mission is because we do not want anyone to go to that place. Now let me say this to you, dear friends. There is no in-between. There's no stopover. <laughs> a person who does not accept Christ as their personal Savior, they will eternally be separated from God. Now how's people going to hear the good news? Well, the only way they're going to hear it is when people are willing to go and willing to tell people about Jesus. I know some of you say, well, I, we, I can't do it. I can't get out. I can't go. All that. That's true. We all agree with that. But listen, you can give. And when you give, you will help others so that they can go. But someone needs to go. This, I tell you, this whole world we live in is cold. It's indifferent. Many people are confused and they're hungry and they're sick. And what they need is not a doctor and, you know, or the government to do something. What this world needs more than anything else is the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> he is the number one thing and we need to remember that. We need to keep the number one thing, the number one thing. I heard a story about a man named Jacob. Jacob was a lighthouse keeper. He married a godly woman named Martha. So the first day that he brought Martha home to the lighthouse, he had this to say to her. Martha, keep the lens clean and the light burning brightly. The years went by, but they remained faithful. Never, not one time did a ship sink or a ship wreck off the shore. One day, Jacob was taken, he was taken sick and then was taken to the mainland. Several days later, a boat came. Martha sensed something was wrong. And the man who came bowed his head and said, Martha, Jacob died this morning. Martha said, well, did Jacob have anything, any last words for me? Did he say anything? He said, yes, he did. He said, tell Martha, keep the lens clean and the light burning brightly. I say to you this morning, that's what we're to do. We're the light of the world. We must keep our lives clean and keep our lives pure and keep on, keeping on doing what is the number one thing. Amen. And that is winning people to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. The second thing we're on missions because of the God that we serve. You know, our Heavenly Father is a mission-minded Father. That's right. He is concerned about us, and He give the Lord Jesus Christ give us this command that we're to go, that we're to teach, we're to baptize. You know, we're not only to win the loss of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're to teach them once we win them to the Lord. We're to teach them the things of Jesus. We're to let them know what is right and what is wrong. They need to be in the Bible. They need to understand God's Word. We're His children. And we must always be of service to Him. You know something? It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to salvation. Second Peter tells us that. Well, you know what? 
God is a God of love also. And God loves this world. You know how much he loves this world? He loved it so much that he sent his only son, his only begotten son, into this world that none should perish but all should be saved. And we know that the Lord Jesus Christ himself, he went to Calvary's cross and he died on that cross for the souls of lost people. He died for me and he died for you on that cross. Now you know what? God loves us. And we're to love other people as well. We're to love. We're to love God with all our hearts, our minds, our souls. We're to love our neighbors as ourselves. In fact, we're, we're to even love our enemies. You know what? If we really love as our Lord loved, I'll tell you something, this whole world would be different. <laughs> we don't have all the problems that we have. We don't have all the problems we have in the United States. We don't have all the problems we have in Florida. I'm amazed when I read those words that there are 15 million people in the state of Florida who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ is a personal Savior. What does that say? That says that someone is not doing what needs to be done. You know what? It's so important, dear friends, that we live a pure life, that we let our light shine. You know, tomorrow is, we'll celebrate Labor Day. What is our labor? I, I tell you, our labor is really winning lost souls to Jesus. And we need to do everything that we possibly can do to bring people to the Lord Jesus Christ. I know, you know, tomorrow people will be out and, uh, uh, you know, picnicking and doing everything under the sun. What a wonderful time it would be to go and to tell people about Jesus, to share the good news. <laughs> and by the way, you can do that anytime, any place. You don't have to go on, on visitation. You should, if you can. But you can, you can do it wherever you want. I read a story about a, a woman named Martha. Martha worked in a boarding house over in London, and she hated it. She didn't like it at all. She wanted to get out of there somewhere or another. But she was faithful. She was a faithful Christian, and she just simply stayed with it. One day, a man by the name of Spurgeon, who was really one of the greatest preachers of all time, Someone said to him, said, Spurgeon, said, where did you get all your knowledge of theology? He said, well, I got all I needed up there at the boarding house from a woman named Mary. She thought she wasn't doing much. But she had a great influence on one of the greatest preachers of all time, you see. You can, you can be a witness wherever you're at. Where, I don't care where it's at. You can let other people see Jesus in you. And sometimes, by the way, that's the only Bible they'll ever read is what they see in you. So, be a child of God. Let your light shine. Let it shine brightly wherever you get, wherever you go. Third thing, third reason we are people on mission is because of the command that God gave to us. You know, missions is not an elective. It's a priority. This is God's command. It's often called God. It's often called the Great Commission. And this is what God had to say to us. The Lord Jesus Christ said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go, therefore, and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. This is a command. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the earth. We're commanded to go. 
we're commanded to go teach and baptize. But many Christians, too many Christians are like Jonah. You remember Jonah? God told Jonah, listen, I want you to go to Nineveh and preach to those Ninevites. But Jonah, he thought he knew more than God, so he decided he would go to Tarsus. Actually, he went in the opposite direction. He didn't want to obey God. He wanted to do it his way. But you know what? God sent him to Fish Seminary, which is underwater. And after a short amount of time there, he decided he'd better go to Nineveh. I pray that God doesn't have to do something like that to us to get us to see and to understand what our mission is all about. What we're to do. Where we're to go. And what the number one thing is. And that is to share the Lord Jesus Christ with other people. It's not always easy to do, no. But listen, notice what he said. He will give us the power to do it. Some people feel like they, you know, they just cannot witness. They cannot tell someone about Jesus. But God will give you the power to do it if you're just willing to do it. And he wants to do that. Again, I realize that in our congregation there are those who can't get out. There are those who, uh, you know, uh, can't go, can't get out and witness and all that. But listen to me. You can give. You can give that others can go. One of the great needs right here in the, in the city of Tampa and in, in where we live around here is this thing of starting church. I don't know where you know this or not, but here in, the, here in the Hillsborough County, there are all kinds of different churches. Spanish, Russian, uh, I don't know how, Korean, how many different churches. You know how they started? They started when somebody was concerned enough to want to do something. They didn't have money. They didn't have the funds to do it. But you know what? People like you, people like you stepped in and said, yes, we'll give money. We'll help. And the church was started, established. You'll read about that in your little pamphlet that Gwen read to you this morning. Thank God that there are people who are still willing to do that to see that the Word of God is spread around the world. And it starts right here where we're at, you know. <laughs> Jesus said He would be with us always. And He will be. He wants to be. And by the way, if He's for us, who can be against us? Right. And I say this, we need to really, we need to really truly get back but what is the number one thing? And the number one thing is winning lost souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're to go. We're to give. <laughs> and we're to baptize. We're to teach them. If we do these things, God will bless. And by the way, let me just say this to you. A lot of people say when it comes to giving, well, I just can't give. You know that's not true. Everybody can give a little. And I'd say this to you, my dear friends. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot outgive God. You give it to Him, and you know what He'll do? He'll turn around, give it back to you, press down, running over. You cannot give it. So give. Yeah, it's so important that we do that. He'll give it back to you. By the way, we're not to lay up treasures here on this earth. I uh, was watching the other day, uh, called the Pickers, I think. I'm not sure what the name But it's these guys that go around, you know, they hunt these antiques and all that stuff and everything, you know. It's amazing what people hoard, what they keep. <laughs> You know, all that kind of stuff. Hey, listen to me. Don't lay up treasures here on this earth. Lay up treasures in heaven where moth or rust or cannot get to it or hurt. 
give it to God, it's a lot better than putting it in the stock market or any other thing. Too. You give it to God. And He will use it. And He'll use it in a mighty way. And people will be brought in to the kingdom of God. But look, here's the thing about it, dear friend. First of all, you're going to be a witness. If you're going to serve the Lord, if you're really going to do what God would have you do, well, first of all, you have to be saved. You have to be saved. You have to, you know, if you have a problem with giving or any of those things, listen, it could be that you've never truly given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> See, that's the first step. The first step is that you give your life, your heart, your mind, your soul to the Lord Jesus Christ. He will save you. And when you're saved, He will change you. You'll become a different person. And when you are, when He does that in your life, you won't have any trouble giving. You won't have any trouble going. You don't want to because of what He did for you. You want to give. You want to go. You want to serve. Because when you realize what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you on Calvary Cross, you'll want to do it. So the first step is to be saved. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not hard. If you're here this morning and never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, listen to me. All you have to do is just admit that you're a sinner. Admit you're a sinner. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. You have to agree. Just simply agree that the Lord Jesus Christ left His throne and glory, came down to this earth, went to Calvary's cross, died on that cross for your sin. <clears throat> if you'll do that, He'll save you. And then you must accept. Oh, accept God's free gift. Salvation is a free gift. That cost you. Ah, uh, it cost our Lord. Yes. It cost our Lord and Savior. Yes. That cost you. It's free. Will you accept it this morning? Christian, you're saved. You can sing about heaven. You can talk about glory. You can talk about walking on streets and go. Sometimes I've wondered if the money and the, all that we give to the Lord is not turned into gold and put on those streets. Could be that you're walking on your own gold up there. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying that. But listen to me. Can't I give God? Give and He'll give it back. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saving my son. Yes. Thank you for these Christians here who are dedicated, committed, willing to serve, willing to go, and willing to give. And Lord, this morning, we pray for those who have never given their hearts to you, that today they'll just open up their hearts and invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come in. Perhaps there are Christians here this morning who need to come, unite with our church, and go to work here, serving the Lord. They need to be doing that. And I pray that they will. Forgive us, Father, where we failed you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.